Okay, today I'm going to review a mask that I've wanted to get for ages and I've only just bothered getting. It is an SHM41. Now, this is technically an East German issued one, so it would be called the SCHM. But it's important to note that actual, like the SEHMS or SHMS, only the East German imported ones were known with the C in them. Uh, so this is technically SHM41, not SCHM. So I'm going to keep referring it to it, the SHM41 or M41 if it's easier. Now, SHM41, when you put it into English, literally just means helmet mask in Russian. Um, so the S bit, I'm not, you know, it's a long, weird Russian word, and I don't speak Cyrillic or, you know, read Cyrillic or anything like that. I don't speak Russian. But essentially what you get out with these is, the easier way I think of remembering it is thinking of SHM as Soviet helmet mask. But it, the SHM actually just literally translates the full word into helmet mask. But saying Soviet helmet mask is the easy way of thinking of SHM. So the SHM41, for those of you who don't know, which is basically the GP5's dad. Um, this mask came before the GP5. The GP5 is technically the SHM62U, I believe. But everybody knows it as the GP5 because it was called the GP5 when it was issued in kits with the filter and everything else. So the only real difference between this and the GP5 is that the intake outtake section is bigger uh, as you can see the metal is much bigger there it also uses a typically green or yellow metal not the sort of brown that's on the GP5 I am going to do a video at a later date where I compare lots of masks in the sort of SHM series so you can see the minor differences between them now I don't have one but during World War II, I think near the end of World War II, it, World War II or definitely after World War II the Soviets had a mask called the SHM-1, which was the first of the helmet masks in their series anyway. Um, they did have a helmet mask in World War One, but then they didn't for quite a while. And then at the end of World War Two, they designed another helmet mask called the SHM-1. So it was, you know, the new series of them. Again, it looks very similar to this. The metal was a bit different. You know, bits of it look different, but it's essentially this mask. Um, so these would normally be issued in the carry satchel with the hole in the bottom, I'm sure you all know how these Soviet satchels work and in the satchel you would put your filter in this section you'd have your hose you know, folded away there and the mask in the bigger section then what you do is you install it all together like that you pop the filter into the section with the hole you secure the filter inside the thing and then you can breathe through there now these filters do contain asbestos, this one says EO65K but as far as I'm aware these are actually uh, called EO16 filters normally. So let's open it up. So this is a combined really big charcoal and particulate filter. The particulate filter containing asbestos. But if you saw my previous video, I've actually converted this mask to be safe to use. Um, so obviously, don't try this at home unless you've done a safety conversion like I have. Which I'll demonstrate to you now if you didn't see it. Okay, so how did I make this mask safe? Very simple. Let me unscrew the filter. In the filter's intake pipe is a particulate free filter that I have cut to shape to fit there. So basically any asbestos that comes out the filter will get stuck there and not go into my airways. A very simple process. My last video showed you exactly how to do it. But I said there are still probably some risks to this so you know it's really up to you whether you do it. But I just do want to make you aware that there's probably still risks. But it's much better than just deciding you're going to breathe through one of these filters anyway. So I'm going to do the standard test on this mask. This particular mask was made in 1979. It's a size 2Y. Um, so size 2 should fit me fine. Um, now, will this filter still work or has the charcoal completely expired and become useless in it? I don't know. We'll find out. If that filter doesn't work, what I am going to do is I'm going to simply attach straight to the mask one of my sort of Polish modern filters that are safe and work. So that's how I'm going to do the video, but hopefully maybe the old Soviet filter will still have some life left in it. As much as I'm obviously not going to recommend you use those as a prepping filter, I do think, you know, as I said, sometimes old filters do still have a bit of life in them, but you should never trust that on your life. But for doing tests like this, they're fine. So let's see if it all works. Right, I have the mask on with the filter. My particulate filter is obviously working because there's loads of air resistance for breathing with this thing on. So as you can see, I'm breathing, but there's a lot of air resistance. I don't know what the normal breathing resistance would be of one of these giant EO16 canisters. But obviously, I'm not going to try it and find out. 
So I can breathe, but obviously it's very laboured. You, would, this is one of the only masks I've actually used, which has so much intake, you know, breathing uh, resistance. But I know from using other Soviet masks that it's not actually the mask at fault. It's either going to be how I've rigged up the particulate system, or it's going to be resistance inside the filter itself. So um, let's test it and see if it works. Alright, I'll give that a couple of minutes, I'll probably end up waffling on for a few minutes anyway. So far I can't smell anything, the only smell I can smell is something that's obviously in the actual filter itself. Because particulate filters do not actually block um, smells, they only block particles. Well, so far I still can't smell anything, so obviously, as you know, these masks are pretty much what the GP5 would be. GP5 just has the smaller metal intake. Because they basically said, um, the SHM mask is so good and cheap to make, can we make it even cheaper, the SHM41? They said, yes we can, here's the SHM62U. Look how cheap it is to make. Now, this breathing resistance is insane. I am managing to breathe, but, you know, I'm really having to try. This is like a really good lung workout, I guess. Um, so, as I said, yeah, I can breathe through the system, and the filter is obviously working, and my particulate filter is obviously working. But... If you're somebody who has to, um, you know, you have quite shallow breaths, maybe this isn't the system for you, because I don't want you to asphyxiate yourselves. What I'm just going to do is um, make sure that I've not got the um, filter stuck around the stack too much, because maybe that's increasing my breathing resistance. But I think it generally just is how I set this filter up in there, so... Um, yeah, as far as I can tell, nothing's pinching the hose. Yeah, if I pinch the hose, I can hear that. But as you can see, yeah, it's working fine. I can't smell anything, so it's old EO16 or EO65, whatever it is, filter does still work. Which is sort of surprising, but I suppose there is a shed load of charcoal in that filter, just because of the size of the thing. But, yeah. There we go. That's been at least two minutes now. The mask is definitely working. So as I said, I haven't actually bothered getting an SHM41 before. I do have the Polish um, OM14, or the Polish M41, which is the exact same mask, just with the zinc eye bits and a bit there. As I said, it is actually really difficult to breathe in this thing. I really have to um, you know, concentrate on breathing and not on talking. So, yes, um, this old filter works, the mask definitely still works, if you put a modern filter on that would be the best thing. You know, it's, there's not much to say about this mask if you're very familiar with the GP5, because that's essentially the next model on. But I really wanted an EO16 filter, because of how cool the big coffee can filters look. And yeah, I wanted a way of using it safely, so I found a way of using it safely, so there we go. So, if you ever wanted to get a working Soviet mask of the original filter and be safe, there is a way of doing it, as you've seen. And the other mask still works. The SHM series is really cool. And I will do a follow-up video where I talk about all the masks in the SHM series that I can get my hands on. But yeah, if you are interested, uh, that's how you convert a particulate filter to be safe, using um, P3 filter pads. I'll just break the seal on the mask, see if I can smell anything. Yeah, that's very, very... <coughs> that's very strong smelling of pine air freshener. So this clunky old Soviet filter still works to some extent. Obviously, do not use it unless you have done a particulate filter installation after the filter itself. Right, I'm going to vacate the room now so I can breathe easier.
Now I'm really interested to find out, did we catch anything in our particle filter? And by the look of it, there is some charcoal staining on the particulate filter, which obviously isn't asbestos. However, I don't know how well that's up on camera, I can definitely see some black smudges on it. So, what we have learnt is that, although there, I obviously I would need a microscope to see asbestos, and I don't think obviously any asbestos has actually come out there, because as I've said before, the Soviet filters in theory are safe as long as they don't leak. Um, I think there is some charcoal staining on there to a small degree. I can definitely see at least one flake of charcoal. A bit of discoloration on there by the look of it. So, you know, that would have been your lungs if this was not in the way. So, there you go. Yeah, very good idea to install one of these onto a Soviet mask if you are actually indeed going to use it with a Soviet filter.